Okay. 22 years later, after leaving Nepal in 1976 to go to India, my husband is asked by Adventist Frontier Missions if he would go back to Nepal and renew the contract between Adventist Frontier Missions and the government. Now, my husband had done this years and years before for the Shear Memorial Hospital. He had helped renew the contract for that hospital, so he knew how much um, government stalling and long days after day being re, uh, told that you'd have to come back, all, all this. So he knew that it would take time. So we were sent to Huas, just the opposite of where we had been. We had been toward the east, but Huas was in Parbat district, way out toward the west. So we went to Huas. It was no small journey. We were delayed many times because of strikes and had to stay in Pokhara at a hotel. For, you know, it just lots of delays. But we finally got on the trail. And like my husband likes to say, <coughs> we were a record-breaking couple because it took us 11 hours to get to the mission station. We were climbing up the mountain and down the mountain and crossing the river. And by the time I got there, I was exhausted, never wanted to leave the place again. But we were the slowest couple to ever get into Huas. All the others were a lot younger, and so they got there quicker. But this had its own challenges, and one of the most amazing things that happened to me was that I had never been good at the language. I had depended upon my children <coughs> to do the interpretations for me because they knew the language, and I just never learned it well. But when I got to Huas and there wasn't a soul that spoke no English, the Nepali I knew, and even more that I didn't know I knew, came back to me, and I became really good friends with the children. At first, the children made fun of us, and they would poke holes in our plastic windows and ask us our name and just pester us. <clears throat> but after a while, they became my little friends, and there was, there's always some child that seems to be so curious about foreigners. And there was a little girl that just seemed to want to always be around us. So she became a little friend. And one day, she was down in the valley by the river. Now, the mission was up on the, hill, on the mountainside, and the river was below us some distance. And her little friends found her in the grass unco unconscious. And they had run to the father, and he carried her up to us. It was becoming twilight, and the father brought the little girl stiff as a board. Her neck was stiff, her back was stiff, and her toes were, were curled up. And my husband said, this looks like meningitis. Uh, it's a dreadful disease. It, what is it? it affects the, um, the brain and the spinal column. We had no way of getting this little girl to a proper hospital. All we had was a clinic with a few medicines. And so we took her into our home. Now, mind you, we had no electricity excepting for some little solar thing that was for only half an hour. It was like a little tube that cast out a blue light. And it only lasted for half an hour. So we laid her in our living room, and I began to heat water on a Primus stove and get the towels, and I was going to give her fomentations. And the father sat right there, anxious, and Richard and I began to work. So we began to give her fomentations and prayed and prayed and prayed, fomentations hot and cold, alternating back and forth, and pled with the Lord to save this precious little girl's life. Now, I'll tell you, it's hard in the mission field. I had always heard about healings, and I thought, how come we never see anybody healed? How come we don't have stories like that? And so my faith was kind of weak, 
But I pled and pled with the Lord, and so did Richard, and we continued our treatments. The light was gone. We had to have a candle. There was no way for us to hardly see what we were doing. But at 11 o'clock, approximately, that little girl opened her eyes, looked around, and began to wonder where she was. And we were so joyous. It was like she had come back from the dead. I know she was unconscious because Richard gave her a shot of antibiotic and she made no move at all. And so to, for her to come to life about 11 o'clock and they all slept near her for the rest of the night to make sure that she was all right, I got up and my husband got up through the night. The next morning, her father put her in a blanket on his back and carried her the whole long, long, long journey out to a bus and took her to a mission hospital of, of another denomination, the only one in our area. And yes, the diagnosis was the same that we had. A few days later, she came back walking, coming back with her father. I can not tell you what a wonderful joy that was. So the Lord at last gave us something that we could call a miracle. So that was a wonderful thing. And I just thank the Lord. And also, I, I had never been in the hospital. I'd always been in the home at, in um, Bonapa at our hospital there. But this time, I was right by my husband's side. We helped with a night delivery. I was there with a candle and helping to get the hot water and things. And so there was a delivery of a baby at the middle of the night. So for me, that was a highlight. We were there five months and a student missionary got the final um, signature. Richard got all the signatures but one. And a student missionary that we uh, met at San Francisco was able to get the final uh, contracts signed and so we feel very very happy that we could go back and see how the work had to prog progressed and feel like yes I guess we did make a contribution for the Lord.